My audio is working fine, but if anything happens, feel free to put something in the chat and I'll try to troubleshoot. Actually, I'm going to switch microphones. Okay, Beth, can you hear me now? Hopefully they'll give me a thumbs up here. Um, so we're just going to do four to five today. Sometimes this class is till 5.15, but it'll just be till five today. Um, and today I would love to talk about, in my Monday morning classes, we've been talking about the art of noticing, which is actually a book called The Art of Noticing, uh, and talks about how so many creatives and writers find, people find inspiration many times in noticing things, right? Noticing things that maybe other people overlook, noticing unique details of things. We had the eclipse this week and that was like, we didn't have to really try that hard to notice like, whoa, there's something big happening. Um, I got to go to the Pentecrest and look through the microscopes that the physics department had, which is really neat. But there's so many other wonders welcome um, that are around us when we are able to tune in and notice. And I think, you know, there's so many things distracting us in our day-to-day -day lives. Yoga is really a practice where we can practice noticing things in our own selves first and then taking that with us off of our mats, right? So we can notice sensations. How do I feel different today versus yesterday? What does my emotional self feel like? Um, and that can really give us good practice in being here in present moment, right? That's where all the good stuff is happening. There's not something more amazing and better and more important that's happening in the future. It's all unfolding moment by moment right now. Um, and so I'm going to read to you this poem and then we will get started. If you want to sit tall and close your eyes as you listen to this, you can. If you prefer to just soften your gaze, um, and this poem is called The Patience of Ordinary Things by Pat Schneider. It is a kind of love, is it not? How the cup holds the tea, how the chair stands sturdy and four square, how the floor receives the bottom of shoes or toes, how soles of feet know where they're supposed to be. I've been thinking about the patience of ordinary things, how clothes wait respectfully in closets and soap dries quietly in the dish and towels drink the wet from the skin of the back and the lovely repetition of stairs. And what is more generous than a window? So you can allow your eyes to close if they're not already and sit well. And just bring to mind for yourself there are any little ordinary things that you can appreciate and think about right now, bring them to mind. Maybe they're everyday items. Maybe there's something in nature, the beauty and repetition of a sunrise and a sunset every day. How spring is starting to happen all around us. just welcome in a breath in through the tip of your nose and welcome yourself here to your mat Friday afternoon. Feel a nice exhale, escape from the lips, shoulders melt down the back, sit nice and tall. Maybe just have a brief moment to feel a little bit of awe. 
at your own body, all of the systems that work together below our conscious mind, just allow us to move through life. Coming back to allowing our consciousness to rest on the breath here. A couple more inhales, feeling the spine lift, crown of the head lift. And a nice exhale, just letting the week go. Another nice cleansing breath, just like that. Okay, last one, inhale. Feel free to sigh. Join your hands together in front of your heart here in Anjali Mudra. If there's any additional intention that you'd like to set for your practice today, a mantra that maybe you work with, just allow that to come to the surface now. And with that, we'll take one more breath in together. Exhale, bow your head towards your hands and your heart. And gently release your hands with your eyes. We'll start on hands and knees position. So you can go ahead and clear your mats off. Have some crafts and go ahead and come into hands and knees. And oftentimes we start with just some nonlinear movement. So just going ahead, moving around circular motions, no right or wrong way to move, and practicing this part of noticing, right? Many of us maybe have done these same poses at the beginning of a yoga class over and over and over again here. <laughs> So seeing if as you're moving, you can just notice what it feels like today. Let the room be room to notice for your own body today with your own breath today, just the quality, the sensation. A lot of people, when I say that I teach yoga, say I'm not good at yoga. Yoga is not about being good at any particular pose. It's just about using the poses to get into our body. So to me, being good at yoga means can you tune in? Can you be here with sensation? Can you be here with breath? Can you be here with movement? So you might be moving side to side. You might get your head in on the action. You might slide back into child's pose. Yeah, take it as you wish. <laughs> If you'd like to move with me through some more traditional cat and cow poses here, spread your fingers really nice and wide, knees underneath the hips, inhale, reach your chest forward, reach your tail back behind you, exhale, round and curl, tailbone tucks in, chin tucks in, round through the back, good, inhale, let everything unfurl, let your belly drop and soften, and as you exhale, round and curl, do a couple more with your pace. So all of our breath might be at a slightly different pace. I'm just allowing that to carry you through the little wave. Really nice, everybody. Starting to tune more from that outward sight to a more inward focus. After your next pass, we'll stretch your right leg out to the side and ground through the sole of your foot. Good. And then three cat and cows here. Inhale, reach your chest forward, pelvis back. Exhale, round and curl. Make it feel slightly different. Just notice for you how the pelvis feels different here in cat and cow with this leg extended. Last time. Good. Find stillness right here. We're going to move to a variation of thread the needle. Reach your right arm up to the sky. And thread your right arm through, coming to the right side of your head. If the floor feels really far away, you can grab a blanket and put that underneath your head. Just find a bit of a twist here. Good. So you exhale, relax that right shoulder down. Inhale, come back up. Place your right knee underneath your right hip, extend your left leg long, and three cat and cows here. Inhale, reach your chest forward, reach your 
Sitting bones back and apart. Exhale, round and curl. Two more, just like that. Job. Next time, come through tabletop. Left arm extends up to the sky and threading it through, coming to the left side of the head. You can come on fingertips of the right hand if you wish, or anything that seems like it helps you stabilize here as you stretch through your shoulders, stretch your hips back. We're going to get into all those major joints today hips and shoulders. Inhale, come back through center and find your tabletop position. Good. If it's okay on your knees, slide back into a kneeling position. If it doesn't feel okay, you can go into cross-legged or put a blanket behind your knees. If some of you want a little extra spiciness, you can tuck your toes under. Okay. Inhale, reach your arms up, interlace your hands, stretch them to the sky. Really get long through your side body. Good. Then take your hands behind your head, squeeze your elbows in. With an inhale, look up, reach your elbows to the sky. Stretch your chest up, a little bit of a back bend here. Good, inhale, come back through center, place your hands back down, and then walk your hands forward of your shoulders, press up and back, downward facing. Take any little rituals you like to in your down dog, maybe pedal one foot out and then the other. <sighs> maybe take a couple sides. Staying with the breath here. And when you're ready, walk your feet to meet your hands and standing forward fold. Now, if you need to, anytime we're in a forward fold, just slide blocks underneath the hands if your hamstrings are tighter. Otherwise, bend the knees a lot, totally fine. And just as you're here, see if you can reach your seat back a little bit more. Have an even curve to the back. Yeah, you can bend one leg and then the other. We never want any pulling in our low back in a forward fold. Okay, so you really want to think about reaching your sitting bones back and apart. Good. When you're ready, inhale, come all the way up to standing. Let your eyes follow your hands all the way up. Exhale, float your arms down to the side. Good, reach your arms forward. First, we're gonna let the arms unplug. So like I'm pulling on your wrists, reach, and then plug them back in, shoulders on the back. Good, your right hand forward, your left hand back, okay, uh, into a twist. And you'll notice that your left hip is gonna come with you toward the back. See if you can pull it towards the front. So your hips both point toward the front. Good, inhale, both arms forward, then the right arm reaches to the back. And that right hip pulls forward gently as you're trying to get the twist more in your mid upper back. Good, inhale, both arms reach up to the sky. Exhale down into chair pose. Feet hip bone distance apart. You can bring them closer together. Balance will be trickier that way. Works for your hands into the center and slide your shoulders down your back. Feel your strength there. Weight through the heels, wiggle your toes. Good, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, place your hands down and step back to downward dog. Inhale, come forward to plank. Option to come to your knees. Lower all the way to chaturanga. High to low push up. Untuck your toes. Fingertips come outside your mat and lift your elbows up nice and high. It's going to give you a lot of space. If this is tighter for you, bring your hands forward. Otherwise, hands alongside your chest. We're gonna lift up here, shoulders roll on the back, stretch your feet behind you. Good, and then move around a little bit. You might dip one shoulder down and then the other, maybe you turn to look at your heels back behind you or just making some swirling motions, getting things unstuck. Staying with your breath, noticing where you feel this. Good. Next time you come down, slide your hands alongside your chest and press up and back, downward dog. Good. Look in between your hands. Step your right foot in between your hands for a deep lunge and set your back knee down. Hands can be either side or on your hips here. Keep in mind, if this is a hard floor and these mats are not that thick, so you can always 
um, put a blanket underneath your knee or grab an extra mat if you'd like. Come forward and back a few times into this lunge. And I want you to keep your gaze grounded toward the floor. Press your front heel down and drag it back. Press your back knee down and drag it forward. Notice that that allows you to activate through the legs a little bit more. Good, next time you come down into the lunge, stay. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Good, exhale, slide your shoulders down your back. Maybe sink into your lunge a little bit more. For more balance, hug your legs in toward a midline, imaginary midline. Left um, hand goes down the center of the back. Sorry, you're right, you're right. <laughs> right hand down the center of your back, yep. You all got it, good. Okay, and then other hand can come behind. Maybe it grabs your hand, maybe it just grabs your clothes or you stay in that tricep stretch, okay? Sink down, maybe look up. Just the hint of a back bend, maybe the hint of a smile across the face. Good, come more upright, hands either side of the front foot. Good, heel toe that foot off to the side. Both hands come into the inside of that leg for a lizard lunge. If you'd like, you can walk your, your back knee back in space a little bit. Might give you a little bit more room and just move around here. You can allow that knee to spill out to the side if you want. We're here in a lizard lunge and yeah, blocks. If you want to use blocks, I would use them both on the inside. You got it. Excellent. So just moving around a little bit here. So getting into the hips, getting into the shoulders, just noticing what's here today with that spirit of non-judgment, right? Just observation. Yeah, some of you are down on forearms. Where you are, you can absolutely stay. If you want to join me for a little twist, you're going to bring your left hand down on a block or the floor. Right arm reaches up. Good. And then if you want, hand can reach behind you. Maybe pick up the back foot and grab it for a thigh stretch. Maybe not. Shoulders squeeze together on the back. Take a breath. Really nice release. You have blocks. Either way, we're coming to half splits. You can bring blocks on either side of the front foot. And rock your hips back as your front toes come up. Might need to walk that heel forward just a little bit, okay? And before we move from here, just kind of shift hips side to side a little. So you can kind of find a neutral pelvis. You can even take your hands on your sacrum. When you feel like you can kind of even everything out, anchor that front heel down, isometrically drag it towards your hips, and then find any space to fold. And hands can come to the floor or to those blocks. Take an inhale, get a little bit longer through your spine, and with an exhale, finding some more space to fold and stay with whatever sensation is here. Another one, inhale. Exhale. All right, last time, inhale. And exhale. Really nice, everybody. From here, place that front foot down and lift your back knee, step forward, standing forward, fold. Just take a moment to release your head and your neck. Notice if you feel any pulling in your low back near your sacrum. If you do, bend your knees more and sit your seat back, back, back. Maybe sway side to side or buzz out the lips a little bit. Just let anything that led up to this moment, let it go. It's in the past. Be where your feet are. Bend your knees, inhale. When you're ready, come all the way up to standing. Grab opposite elbows. Really lift through your elbows so you can imagine your side body getting really long from your hips all the way up. Good, tuck your tailbone slightly, pull your lower belly in, and then exhale, tilt to the side. Look underneath your right arm, tilt to the left. 
I'm trying to mirror you. Inhale, come up. Good, tilt to the right. Under your left arm. Inhale, you can release the arms or keep them as we go back down into chair pose. So we got this opposite elbow grip here. Good, sink your seat back. For a little bonus, we're gonna make our way to a halfway hover. So reach your elbows towards me, pull your belly in, halfway hover. Good, then straighten your legs, release your hands. Roll your shoulders, release your head. Take a breath and let it go. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands down, step back to down dog. <clears throat> Inhale, roll forward to plank. Again, option to come to your knees and lower all the way down to your belly. Untuck your toes. This time we're gonna prop up on your left forearm. Bend your right leg. And see about swimming your right hand behind you. This might not work for everybody. We're just going for a thigh stretch. Your other option is you can roll onto the side of the body and just do a thigh stretch here. Okay, or you can skip this and go back to cobra. You are here on the thigh stretch, inner foot toward outer hip. Just trying to get that. <clears throat> Your next exhale, release, we'll move to the other side. Again, you can roll to the side seam of your body and just stretch here if it doesn't work to stay on the belly. And release, hands either side of the chest. You can press up to the tabletop, back to downward facing dog. Good, this time step your left foot forward in between your hands for a deep lunge. Set your back knee down. I don't remember the exact order we did, but we'll get into all of it. Hands come to the hips. Come forward and back a few times here in Anjanea. Anchor that front heel down, drag it back. Just fires up through the legs. Back knee, press down, drags forward. Helps give us lots of stability there. Good, inhale, reach your arms up. Next time you come down into that lunge, hug your legs into the imaginary midline. Good, left hand comes down the back for a tricep stretch. So you can stay here or you can wrap the other hand behind you. Might just be able to grab your clothes, that's fine. Otherwise working, maybe you can grab hands and then lean back ever so slightly, stretch up through that elbow. Inhale, come forward, hands come down. We'll move to the twist. So right hand down, left arm reaches up. Good, and then maybe hand comes behind you. Maybe you grab that foot for a twisted thigh stretch. Good, and release. Hands come on the inside of the front foot. You can heel toe your left foot off to the left a little bit for lizard lunge. And again, you might walk your back knee back a little and just stir things up. Maybe notice for you, where do you feel this today? Is it more on the front hip or the back hip? Maybe you feel this through the hamstring or the groin. When you're ready, we're gonna make our way to half split. Some of you might want to bring your foot more in toward the middle, kind of personal preference there. But we'll rock the hips back, grab those blocks if you'd like. Toes go straight up and down. So just like we've been working Press the heel down, isometrically drag it back. That's gonna help activate the muscles through the back of the leg. It's okay if your leg's not straight, just working towards straight. You might not come as deep if you're just really working on an even curve to the back. But otherwise you can bring hands to blocks or the floor. With an inhale, lengthen your spine. Imagine your sternum reaching toward the front of the room. As you exhale, 
find some space to fold. Notice how the sensation changes as you fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale. Sometimes we need to be patient with our own muscles as they get adjusted to what we're asking them to do as they find safety to soften. Really nice. Place that foot down, hands either side. Did I miss anything? I don't think I did either. Lift your back knee, step forward, standing forward, fold. Take your feet a little bit wider here in this forward fold. Bend your knees a little bit, and we're gonna move to, our, to a twist. So right hand down, left arm reaches up, and your um, right hand can be on a block. As you stretch up, some of you are just naturally doing this, left leg straightens, right leg bends. So that straight leg, you're kind of bowing out into the straight leg. Exhale, switch sides. Might feel this a little bit in the IT band. The outer hip. Excellent. Both hands come down. Take your feet out even wider. Turn your toes out slightly. We're coming down into a squat. If you prefer, you can sit on a block here for Malasana squat, or you can just come down into this squat. Heels can be lifted, or you can take your heels on a blanket, lift through your chest, anchor through the tailbone, really go to the low back as well. Okay. Place your hands down, turn your toes forward, knees forward, back to the forward. Take any variation of forward fold you like here. So either ragdoll arms, maybe you interlace hands behind your back and allow them to release to the front of the room. <sighs> Taking any movements that seem intuitive to you here. Release any hand position that you have. Hands come to the hips, come all the way up to standing. Good, roll the shoulders on the back a couple times. Back and then forward. Release your hands down, look down at your feet. And we're gonna bounce a couple times up and down on the toes. Just rocking weight into the toes coming, heels lifting up. Might hear some little pops and sounds as you do so. Good news is, even though you might feel off balance on your tippy toes, if you fall, you're not very far up from your heels from the ground. Good. And then find some stillness. Lift up all 10 of your toes. Sometimes we do this in my classes. We're gonna try to bring pinky toe down together. Then your fourth toe. Then your third. Try not to check out if they come down together. That's okay. Second toe and then back to the big toe. Good, exercise and mindfulness there. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands come down through heart and coming to chair pose. Good, sink your hips back behind you, pull your low belly in. So imagine you're sitting into a little itty bitty kindergarten chair. <laughs> Lift your left heel up. Good, set it back down. Lift your right heel up. Good, a couple times each side to side. Imagine you have something sticky on your heel, make it harder on yourself. Just doing a little bit of balance here, working through some leg strengthening. Good, one more time each side. Excellent, straighten your legs and take a forward fold. <clears throat> Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands down, step back to down dog. Here in down dog, stretch your arm bones long, stretch your seat up to the sky. As you take an inhale, come up on tippy toes. So down dog, just up on tippy toes, good. Exhale, sink your heels closer to the floor, reach your seat higher. Two more times, inhale, exhale. Good, inhale, exhale. When you're ready, step your right foot in between your hands. For a lunge, hug your legs in and then bring your hands to your front thigh if you can. If it's too much, you can always leave the back knee down. Sink nice and strong into that front leg. Keep that good muscle stability. 
and then reach your arms up, slide your shoulders down your back. You might stay here, or you can reach both arms out in front of you. Left hand forward, right arm reaches back, kind of like we began. Good. <laughs> Inhale, both arms up. And then slide to warrior two. Your back foot slides down. Back sliding around, shoulders on the back, gaze over the front middle finger. See if you can bend really strongly. Can y'all come down more? Good. Press that knee out. Nice, everybody. Right buttock tucks under. Keep your legs where they are. Inhale, reverse up and out of the hips. Exhale, hands either side of the front foot and step back to down dog. You can stay in down dog or you can cruise through a vinyasa. Your choice there. If you want to come with me, you'll flow forward to plank. Lower, high to low push up. Inhale, cobra, and exhale, down dog. Good. Take three cleansing breaths here. Everybody, look at your fingers. Could you spread them wider like little starfish? Good. Finish those three big breaths. And when you're ready, step your left foot in between your hands for a deep lunge. Hands come on the front thigh. So to get stability, hug your legs in. So outer hips squeeze in. Inhale, reach your arms up. Good, straighten your back leg as much as you can. Arms reach forward, right hand forward, left arm back. Twisting more from the mid upper back. Beautiful, inhale, both arms up. Exhale, warrior two, slide your back foot down, open your front knee, shoulders over the hips. Settle and soften even here in the strength. Good, and then reverse up and out, big side body stretch. Beautiful, hands either side and step back, downward dog. Knees come wide, big toes touch, slide back into child's pose. Take a couple breaths here and decide what kind of child's pose you want. You can keep it more active or passive. And then even wrap your hands around and grab your heels like a little seed. Your forehead's on the floor. You might rock it side to side. You can always put a blanket behind your knees if that feels better to you. And we'll walk our hands off to the right. So they might both come off your mat to the right. You can be up on fingertips if you'd like or flat palms. See if you could anchor your left hip back and get a nice stretch through your left ribs. Then switch sides, hands will come to the left side of the mat. Anchor your right hip back in space. See if you can get a nice stretch out through your right side ribs. Good, walk your hands back through center. Back to regular child's pose. It's a great time to tune into your breath here. Many times our breath is more audible when we're close to the mat and introduce your ujjayi breath if you haven't already. So that slight constriction in the back of the throat like you're fogging up a mirror. And really calming for our nervous system to have slow exhalation. So when you're ready, slide back up your hands and knees position. Find your knees underneath your hips. Again, spread your fingers nice and wide. Roll your shoulders on your back. From here, extend your left leg back behind you. Keep your toes tucked and pump a few times back on your toes. Stretching through the back of the leg and the hamstring a little bit. From here, anchor through your belly. We'll lift up that left foot. Try to even out your hips. So just notice if your toes turned out to the side, you might look down at them, keep them down. Good. And then maybe extend right arm alongside your ear for spinal balance. 
Take a breath and lengthen, stretch out, and then pull everything back in. Good. From here, bend your back foot. You might just stay there. Maybe you swim your hand behind you for tighter pose. Maybe not. If you'd like to, you can capture the foot with the hands. Find the hints of a back bend here. And good. Come back down through tabletop. Send your right foot back behind you. Pump a couple times on your toes. <laughs> I always like to take a peek back at my toes, make sure all of them are getting in on the action if they can, stretching really well through the bottom of the foot. And then press your hands down firmly, really pull your low belly in. That's going to help you as you elevate your right foot, right toes point down. So you might just notice, are they going out to the side? Work through that leg back in. Excellent. Maybe left arm comes alongside your ear. So we'll keep this extended just for two breaths. As you inhale, just have the sensation of reaching out. As you exhale, just plug your arm and your leg in. Good, then bend your back leg. Either stay there or swim your hand behind you, capturing the foot. And a little stretch into the back bend, so good. And exhale, release back to tabletop position. Sit back on your heels for just a moment. You can keep toes tucked again or not. Interlace hands round, tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone. Good, exhale, reach up, little bit of an arch through the spine, more like cow tilt. Exhale, hands come down, place your hands down. We'll make our way up to standing. So you can come through a forward fold and then come all the way up. Good, take a step to the front of your mat. Go ahead and look down at your right foot. Spread your toes and find the right four corners of your foot. So inner toe mound, inner heel, outer toe mound, and outer heel. So those are the four corners. And yeah, if you lift up your toes, you can even kind of rock around like, okay. And I feel in through those four corners, right? I'm practicing the art of noticing. And half foot here at the ankle, calf or inner thigh. And start with your eyes pointed downward as you build this tree pose from the ground up. You can always hold onto the wall here. Again, some days we just might wanna be a little bit more grounded. Outer hips squeeze in, he looks good. And then from there, you can grow any variation of your tree that you'd like. You might extend your branches. Keeping your eyes toward the floor is gonna be helpful for keeping and maintaining your balance, but we're all gonna fall out at some point. So be playful, don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> yeah, your tree might sway. When you're ready, come out. Shake it out before you move to the other side. So other foot, find those four corners of the feet. Maybe you lift up your toes and kind of rock around. So arches of the foot pull up. Start with a kickstand, calf or inner thigh. You just don't want your foot directly on your knee. Too unstable for that joint. Good, and once you get there, your hips have swayed off to the side. See if you can squeeze them in, get a little taller, ground through your bottom leg. So feel that sensation of pressing down through your foot like it's in concrete and at the same time lifting up from your pelvis, getting maybe nice and tall as you grow the branches of your tree. So good, everybody. Come back through center. Right, shake out your legs a little bit. I'm gonna take your arms out to the sides. So stagger with your neighbor if needed. Good, and from here, your left hand is gonna come underneath. So we're moving to equal arms. So you can either take hands at the shoulders here, backs of the hands toward one another, or you might be able to wrap palms together, okay? From here, lift your elbows up away from you and feel that nice maybe stretch, then squeeze in. So you're squeezing your elbows toward one another. There's a lot of compression happening here and we've got a bind going on. Good, after your next one, just release, stretch it out. 
push me around a little bit. Very good. This time, right arm comes underneath, back of the hands together. We're double wrap with palms of the hands together. So you're squeezing your arms in together. Lift your elbows away from your chest. Maybe even look up a little bit. Just feel this bind, lots of compression through the joints. And release with stretch. Some shoulder rolls back and forward. Good, we're gonna come to a figure four stretch. So you might wanna come to a wall or a pole. Um, if you're good on balance, maybe you don't need to. Balance on your right leg and we're gonna cross your left leg over, flex your toes of that left foot. Yeah, good. So you can start here, moving kind of legs into almost like a chair position. So you want a little overhang with the feet and flexing that foot is gonna help fire up the muscles of the leg. So if you can sink down a little more, you can bring hands to heart center. Yeah, if some of you love an arm balancers, you can do an arm balance here if you want. Um, otherwise, reach your sitting bones back and apart. Hold a little more. So we're just going for a stretch through this outer hip. Good. Inhale. Before you put this foot down, see if you can lift it up to one-legged mountain and see if we can extend three times. One, two, three. Nice job. Place that down. We'll balance now on the left leg, cross the right ankle over. Wake up those toes. You can bring hands to heart center as you sink down. So think chair leg. And then we just got this figure four stretch. Nice. Seat reaches back behind you. Sink down a little more. Really nice. And inhale, come up. One-legged mountain. Extend. Three. Two and one. Good. Find both feet firmly on the ground. Roll your shoulders on your back and find a nice mountain pose from here. So always think about building this from the ground up as well. So feel through the four corners of the feet. Wake up the legs. So maybe even your kneecaps lift up a little bit with the engagement of the legs. Shoulders nestle onto the back. Maybe palms shine forward. And you can either look at the floor or just like a soft filtered gaze, look down. As you inhale, bring your awareness to that big expansive sky above you. As you exhale, feel the support and weightiness of the earth beneath you. Inhale, expansiveness. Exhale, groundedness down through the feet. One more time, inhale and exhale. Okay. Blink your eyes open if they were closed. Take a nice inhale, exhale, fold forward. We're making our way to pigeon pose. So we'll start by stepping back to downward dog. And then inhale, bring your right knee forward and through. So right knee outside the right wrist. If this doesn't work for your body for any reason, or you just prefer to be on your back, you can do this figure four stretch on your back, okay? Otherwise, walk your left knee back in space a little bit. Just going for a stretch through that outer hip. So hands can come down to block. Sometimes people like to make two fists and rest their forehead on their hands. And bring any small micro movements that you might like here to help you settle. And with the art of noticing, what do you notice here? What do you notice about sensation? What do you notice about your mind or your breath? No need to change or shift anything, but just through our observation, through our mindfulness, things will naturally shift. If you're on forearms, you can come up a little bit. 
We're actually going to take a seat down on that right hip and swing your back leg forward. And go into a one-legged um, forward fold stretch here. So walk the sitting bones back and apart. Good. First, we're going to twist the opposite direction. So you all, I think this should be your right leg forward. Yeah, great. Left hand comes on the outside of the right knee. We're going to twist. Good. Inhale, come back through center. Option one is to fold forward here, right in the center. Option two is to fold over the leg. If you feel really stuck once you get here, I would just recommend taking your hands back behind you and work on grounding your legs, staying with a nice anchoring through this thigh. Yeah, try to make the toes go straight up and down. If you feel like you have some more freedom to move forward a little bit, you might spin the belly over the leg. But if this is a trickier spot for you and it, you feel kind of rounded and stuck, better to just stay upright and work on grounding the legs. All this will come with time. Inhale, come up. Okay, we're going to move to fire logs on this side before we go back to pigeon. So your right leg, you're going to take it out so the angle is going to be a little bit wider. Take your hands underneath your left leg. You're going to see about stacking it on top of your right. Now, all of us have really different anatomy and different open hips. So this is not going to work for everybody. I'm going to give you another option if it doesn't work. Okay. For those of you that it does, you want a little overhang with your top foot if you can. Okay. If it's just not happening, stretch the bottom leg straight. Okay. And other foot. Yeah. And then with those toes, see if you can try to keep them flexed. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Okay. Those of you that are in this position, We'll just work on staying upright here and anchoring this down. You might fold forward a little bit. Those of you that are in the spiral log position, so you can get that foot to have a little bit of an overhang so you can be nice to the knees there. It's a tricky pose. Hands might come into the soles of the feet even if you just have that one foot folded and you might fold forward any amount. So all we're going for is sensation through the outer hip. Good, isometrically, drag your heels towards your hips. You might be able to fold forward more. You have really open hips. Just go till you feel some sensation, something interesting to observe. If you're not feeling anything, talk to me after class and I'll help you out. Inhale, come up. One more twist here. We're gonna take left hand on the sole of that foot. Come back through center. Shake out the legs before we move on to the other side. We're going to make our way to pigeon pose with our left leg forward and right leg back. So you can go through downward dog, however you want to get there. We'll do that little sequence again. Forward folds are just challenging class of poses. So we oftentimes save them for the end. We're a little bit more warmed up. Seeing if you can stay with your breath here. Just with your mind's eye, imagine sending it any places that feel really stuck. You feel like there's a lot of sensation there. Relax your jaw. Do your next exhale. We'll just sink down onto that left hip. Swing your right leg around. Okay. Your left leg. Okay. Walk your sitting bones back and apart. Good. We'll twist toward the clock here. And back through center. Option one is to just fold right here. Option two is to take hands either side of that extended leg. Here's the other thing. If you feel really stuck here, another great option to work for a little bit is just taking a blanket underneath the pelvis, sometimes elevating the pelvis slightly. And you can do this for this next whole sequence that we're doing. Just might give you a little bit more freedom if you feel like, especially that the pelvis is tucked under a little bit. Yeah, right. So work what feels like a good... 
position for you, either upright or folding forward. Just trying to work that good posture, even curved back. And then we'll go to fire logs on this side, okay? So this leg is gonna be here on the bottom. You're gonna take your other leg on top. You can stay on the blanket here, okay? Or um, your left leg is gonna be extended. Okay, options for everybody here. Flex through your feet. And option one, stay right here. Option two, fold forward a little bit. So try to see if you can spread those toes and you're bringing your pinky toe edge of your foot more toward your shin. Yes, might fire up your legs a little bit more, but it's gonna help not sickle the foot. You have really tight hips. This one can be a good one to revisit. And inhale, come up. And one more twist here for the clock. Excellent. We will remove any props and make your way to your back. Once you get there, bring your knees in toward your chest. We rock a little bit side to side here on your spine. Neck is long, chin is slightly tucked in. And we'll go through two passes at bridge pose. If you prefer supported bridge, just slide a block underneath your low back. Otherwise, hands alongside your body, feet point straight ahead. So just look at your feet. Notice if they're turned out. So the tendency for most of us is our feet to turn out. So we still want them kind of wide. So they're outer hip bone distance, but they're just pointed straight ahead. From there, we're gonna lift up the hips. Doesn't have to be a massive lift or anything. Pressing back of the head down. You might interlace hands and tuck shoulders underneath the body, extending from hips through your knees. Feeling the grounding here. When you're ready, slowly allow your pelvis to descend. Notice when it touches the ground. Take a breath here. For your second pass, if you'd like to do wheel, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can do a second pass at bridge or do supported bridge with a block. After your next exhale, pick your option and go ahead and lift up to bridge or wheel. Nice, if you're in wheel, see if you can rock forward and back a little bit, heart pressing toward the back of the room. Good, nice, straightening the arms. Coming down whenever you're ready. And allow the knees to open once you get back down out of your bridge pose, soles of the feet together. So in these butterfly legs here. You can take two hands on the belly or one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. As you breathe in, feel the belly lift, big breath all the way down to the base of the belly into the pelvis. As you exhale, belly softens down. Two more breaths like that. Anything else that you'd like to do, just take a couple minutes here to finish out your practice for yourself. Maybe it's a happy baby. Maybe it's a supine twist. Maybe you want to slide a block underneath your low back for a length wall variation. Take your time. What else? And your body feels like it needs a little attention.
essentially grabbing whatever props that you might need for Shavasana. I have some eye pillows up here if you want them. You can grab an extra blanket for behind your head. You have bolsters for behind your knees. So just catch my eye if there's anything that you'd like, I'd love to bring it to you. Let's take a moment to get comfortable. So this is really about finding some symmetry in your body, finding a place where you can relax so there's no gripping. We'll start with the feet, seeing if you can relax your feet out to the sides. Legs completely relaxed, pelvis heavy. Maybe you pick one shoulder up and kind of nestle that shoulder blade underneath the body. Allow your hands to turn up toward the sky. Maybe you just lengthen out the back of the neck, chin and forehead in the same plane. And just opening your senses to a few moments of receptivity and relaxation.
aware of your breath that's already there. Moving your fingers or your toes. Ready for some bigger movements, maybe stretching out. Eventually rolling to one side where you can pause for a breath. you're ready, you can push yourself into a seated position as we began, joining your hands together in front of your heart. Before we close out our practice today, just bring it to mind one thing that you noticed seeing today. What did you see today? One thing. What's one thing you noticed hearing today? The sound of something. What do you remember tasting today? What's something that you touched today? You remember how it felt. finding a little bit of gratitude for all of those things, those experiences that you had today. As you go out into your weekends, just opening your senses. What can you notice? What can you be grateful for? How can you immerse yourself just a little bit more into all this life has to offer? With that, we'll take one more breath in together. Exhale, bow your head towards your hands and your heart. With gratitude, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Ready, blink your eyes open. And release your hands. It's wonderful to practice with you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Have a great weekend. And I'm not sure who will be here next week, but someone will be here next week for a community class as well. Oh, thanks, Arlen. Oh. I'm glad you like that, Mariana. That can be a nice thing to do in your journal. Um, just things that you notice with your senses. Beth and Linda. Yeah. And sometimes with that journaling one too, you can even draw. Like, what did you see? Like, draw a little image if you're feeling creative. <laughs> but it's great to have all of you.